you guys are followers of the channel, you know that last year we brought Eric on from Blue Water Books and Charts to talk about the sunsetting of paper charts with the UKHO and the UK and NOAA here in the United States. Well, we have some pretty important updates and some questions for you guys, the viewers, so we appreciate you tuning in. So, Eric, since we talked last year, there's been some updates coming out of the UKHO about now how they are going to completely sunset paper charts. What, are, what, what do we need to know from a maritime industry? Yeah, so the big news is, um, you know, when we spoke last time, sort of the end of 2026 was the deadline yep. to sunset paper charts. The UK show has now pushed that and said 2030 as the date at the earliest. Okay. Um, they've realized that there are stakeholders out there that have charting needs that don't necessarily have the option to go paperless, go to an ectus based kind of bridge, uh, that still need some viable alternative, as they've put it, to paperless, so they need to carry paper charts in this case. And they've realized that because this is a regulatory issue beyond the scope of you know, a country or a flag state in particular, it's an international issue, that they really need to work with the IMO to come up with a framework to really move away from paper and really probably design some sort of alternative to full actus. because. What we're hearing is that there are a lot of boats, for instance, smaller fishing boats, uh, small passenger ferries that are running limited routes. You know, they may need to carry a very small handful of paper charts to cover the area that they're in, uh, but they need to carry something because they're operating in a commercial nature. Right. So if you guys remember from our last vlog, we talked about the UKHO... Their proposal was to completely get rid of paper charts altogether and go all digital. I, I remember the stats you said of right now, 15% of the business that the UKHO does is paper, 85% is electronic. And the U.S. side is a little different. What the U.S. said is, we're not necessarily sunsetting paper charts. What NOAA said is, we're just not going to maintain two databases. So you'll be able to still print a paper NOAA chart for a particular area, but it will be based off of the electronic data. So if in our last video, we had a couple of examples of that. You can see the charts look very similar, but there are some differences to that. So you can still get paper through NOAA. So the bigger thing is, now the organizations have finally realized that this is a regulatory thing because when you look at it you know tugs that operate um, around the globe or in individual harbors fishing vessel all the whole entire you know group of thousands of large yachts that are in this kind of non-commercial and and by regulation you either have to have ectus or you have to have paper if you're a commercial vessel so there's no kind of interim to say well i'm not big enough i'm a tug you know a, a tugboat there's one captain running the ship with a couple of mates he does, there's no ability to be able to put ectus on there and if there's no paper available you know now what you know what do they do so it's understandable that the UKHO has kind of backed off and said well wait a minute we need to take a look at this because it's really a global regulatory issue right and yeah cuz remember to become truly paperless the, the ectus standard has far more than just putting in a couple of ectuses and right. boom you're done you have to color match monitors you have to have the manning requirements a whole litany of things to meet this standard. And it's just not possible that some of these smaller vessels that are operating, again, in a commercial context, could meet them. Uh, like I said, and it, it, you mentioned the sort of 15%. Well, it makes sense that while it may not be a large portion of the charting demand, because again, these boats may need to carry one, two, three charts, right. compared to a uh, cargo ship moving all around the world that's gotta carry large swaths of folios to cover where they're going. It's a small percentage, but there are a lot of boats out there that fall into this category. Right. Well, and you look at it, too. It's not like the electronic standard isn't already there. A lot of these tugboats and the ferries and the fishing boats um, and the large yachts, if you've been on them, are running already some type of an electronic charting system, whether it's a Garmin system or a Time Zero mm -hmm. system or, you know, Fruno, whoever it may be, those systems exist. They're just not regulatory approved to be able to say, well, this system can replace paper if you're commercial. And there's probably going to be, sorry to interrupt, but there's probably going to be a size standard too. It's like a commercial, you know, tanker that has 25 crew members that operates globally. They're not going to say, okay, you can use time zero and you don't have to sure. use Ectus. Where we know above the 500 gross ton standard, you have to have the Ectus on board. But, you know, there's these smaller vessels that, hey, there's just not on a tugboat. Where are you going to put, you know, that equipment for Ectus and then the number of crew members you're going to have to bring on to run a harbor tug or a passenger ferry or 
you yeah. know, a large yacht. Exactly. There, there's no problem getting that charting data onto these boats. It's do they does this data meet meet that certain standard right. set forth by the global international maritime organization, right? Um, and so they've really got to, I think, kind of pin that down. And we've really been advocating uh, specifically on the large yacht side of things because that's obviously you know our biggest sure. stakeholder. And they fall into this same realm, but they're moving all around the world, and they carry a lot of paper. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of these boats that were built within the past couple of decades, maybe not doesn't have the bridge space, the budget, whatever right. to put an Ectus in. Certainly not within sort of three years from now, the twenty twenty six, twenty twenty three. Now, you know, so that 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 becomes a really confined period of time to get all of this work done, and without having a, a backup standard, they're kind of saying, well, what are we supposed to do? Right. So this is a topic, like we said when we did our first video, I know later this year we're going to have Eric on and we're going to talk about this again. But what we'd like to do in the interim is we'd like to hear from you guys. If you represent, you know, a flag state, if you have tug operations or you're running a large yacht or a commercial ferry or a fishing boat, we'd like to hear from you guys and get your input and feedback to say, what do you think about, you know, this change in regulation? In the U.S., you can still get the paper charge. So if you're a tugboat operator, running tugs in the U.S., you can still be paper. The paper's available. It's really interesting to see, though, for those people who inter operate now in areas where potentially at 2030 or beyond that those paper charts won't be available. So reach out to us through our social media. We'd love to hear questions from you guys, hear feedback from the flags, anybody in the IMO. We would really like to hear your opinion and get the discussion started around this. And as we do here in the next couple of months, we'll come back on. We'll bring Eric on, take a look at your questions um, and feedback. So don't hesitate to drop in the comments or reach out to us through social media on this very important topic.